Well, hey there, my friends. Hey, it's David, Philippine American Couple. I want to chime in, and I don't normally do this, but I really want to chime in on Otter Creek, Florida. Oh, my goodness gracious. If you haven't been following What The Hell's uh, YouTube channel, which is a fantastic, really large YouTube channel, a good family channel, um, and the ongoings in Otter Creek, Florida, you really need to check them out and, and get caught up to speed. Now, I've been to Otter Creek, Florida. Believe it or not, many years ago, we actually drove through Otter Creek. Now, granted, there's nothing <clears throat> in Otter Creek. Uh, that's why there's only about 100 people that live there. But it is a fantastic story of, of the American mindset. Now, uh, let's see. <clears throat> if you don't know, <clears throat> a recap is real simple. Uh, a young man moved in, bought some property, had troubles uh, from day one about being lied to, being stolen from. The property lines are messed up, drugs, trash, garbage, water theft, water problem, city mismanagement, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, the young man, Mr. Hells, comes in and, uh, and says, look, I understand that this is how you people have done it all your lives, but this is not acceptable. We all need to do the right thing in life. And, and I a thousand percent agree. I don't care if you've done the wrong thing for a hundred years, doesn't make it right. So we have to stop and correct things. So in my little scenario, or my little topic today, I'm going to give Otter Creek and Jeremy uh, some advice about how to move forward. That's what I feel like has always been my calling to being able to bridge uh, gaps and help people <laughs> move forward. So um, young man comes to town, isn't happy. The, with the corruption in the town, and I do believe there's probably a lot of underlying corruption. So let's get into this um, a little bit. Now, we basically have four players. The citizens of Otter Creek, which are just good, normal, everyday, you know, law-abiding people that just want to be happy in life. You know, you have a newcomer, Jeremy and his group, that comes in and wants to in, in, invest into the city, into who his business, into his happiness, uh, which can't blame him for that. And then you have basically a town mayor or a town council and or a town clerk is kind of like the third and fourth parties, your mayor and your town clerk. Now, um, they're to the point now where there's lawsuits being filed, cops have been called, charges are being pressed against the town clerk for touching, you know, a citizen, uh, it's 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 like dysfunction on steroids gone berserk. The really weird thing is we've traveled a lot. And I've seen third world countries function better than Otter Creek. And I mean poverty third world countries that are corrupt as all hell seem to function better than Otter Creek. Uh, which, is cre which is just crazy to me in this day and age. All right, so let's get into this a tiny bit. So here's, here's some of my advice for Jeremy, Mr. Hells, who has been steerheading uh, his, his desire to get the town in a better place. Uh, getting the citizens to come together and say, look, they're, you know, we're having, one, we don't have clean water. We have a corrupt, corruption in government, obviously. There's been a lot of backdoor dealings. And so my advice here is, look, I can tell, Jeremy, this is just from me to you, man to man, I can tell that you're very frustrated and that it really, really is upsetting to you, the personal attacks on you, um, which I, I absolutely, you know, applore. And let me apologize to you, Jeremy, for those people that have said horrible things about you which are not true. The people that are trying to attack you just because you want to stand up for what's right and wrong. So as a, as a fellow citizen, man, I, I empathize, empathize and, and, and I truly am sorry that people are behaving that way towards you. And uh, I employ you not to take it too personal. So I think you have a great channel, you have a great thing going on, and, and man, uh, and I like your faith, I like your compassion to help other people. So let's stay focused on that. Now, Jeremy, what I am saying is, full throttle press on anything illegal. You keep those lawsuits coming, you keep the pressure, even, even as these people quit and resign and go and hide, 
We need to hold them accountable because if the theft and the corruption, the misuse of fund services or goods is uh, disclosed and, un and undercovered, those people still need to be held accountable so that your town can actually grow and move forward. So I applaud you for that. Now, the citizens of Otter Creek, it is going to be your responsibility moving forward to clean this town up and to make it, you know, a place that you guys are all very excited about living in. And I know you guys are getting an excruciating amount of media attention from the local news down to News 20 uh, in Tampa. You know, I know you guys are getting it all over the internet, all over the world. This channel, you know, you don't know me from, from hell of beans. <laughs> but, you know, here I am talking about your town. And I want to encourage the citizens, step up. And I see you guys are trying to do that with wanting to elect a new mayor from the council, getting everybody together on the same page. So the citizens, though, all the citizens, I'm going to employ you to calm down, take a deep breath, relax, let the legal process work, because in the end, you as a citizen of Otter Creek are going to be better for this. I promise you. It's going to be rough going through because there's a good chance that, that as a citizen, you're going to see your town go bankrupt. Now, your town charter may be dissolved and have to be redone because there's so much, there may be so much underlying corruption um, going on. So, but we got to figure out a plan forward. And that's kind of what I'm hoping I can help with a little bit today. Now, let's talk a little bit about your Mayor Russell and your town clerk, who apparently just quit Mary Mary Mathis. Oh, so scary. And uh, first, Jeremy, here, here, let me give a recommendation to Jeremy or somebody else, <clears throat> anybody in the world. If somebody would please, please send the council of Otter Creek, Robert's Rules of Order, copies of it. Give them all their own copies so they can take it home and study it. So they can understand how to conduct a meeting professionally. Because look, whether you're a good old boy and or not a good old boy, or you're corrupt or you're not corrupt, when you run a business meeting, whether you're a billionaire, whether you run a business meeting, you need to run a business meeting professionally and effective. Robert's Rules of Orders will help you do that. And from what I can watch with all these videos, you guys don't have a freaking clue about that. And it's shameful because it's one of the easiest things. I learned it like in the seventh grade, you know, through FFJ. You know, Future Farmers of America taught it. You know, come on. It's the easiest thing to do in the world. But if somebody would just please send them some books. So maybe they could take it home and read it. And then the other thing I would encourage is maybe a volunteer in the town, right? Somebody who's really good at it and understanding it will come to the meetings and be that guy. Because obviously your, your town attorney's a joke and is not is not competent in this matter. So I would get rid of your attorney for one. But I would bring somebody else in who could just be your, your, your Robert's Rules and Orders master, so to speak. Because that might be easiest for you guys to understand. So if somebody would give you guys all of those books, I think that'd be great. And if you would take it to heart and really study it. So that's, that's one of the one big way that you guys could solve a lot of your problems there, do things correctly. Now, um, back to your mayor, Russell, I think is his name. Uh, boy, you, you got psychological issues. You can tell by your body language, you can tell by your speech, your mannerisms, that this is the highlight of your life. Being mayor of a town, a very dysfunctional town of 100 people, is, is you know, like, you've hit it, man. You, you're, you're at the peak, buddy. And that's sad. And you can tell by your body language that you're relishing the power and control that you think you have. But my advice to you is, my friend, is understand you don't have any power. You, you have none. You have 100 people in your town. Your town's a blip on the radar, and you're making yourself look like a fool, and you're going to get yourself arrested. You're going to probably get yourself prosecuted. You know, people are going to keep digging and digging and digging until they find that stolen money or the missing gun or the back payments. You know, they're going to find this. 
So the best thing you could have done is just shut your mouth and just be quiet, you know, and let a new government come in and run the city and run the city or the town in, in a correct way, to do it the right way. What you're doing is not working. And look, sometimes we as humans have to go, look, what I'm doing is not working, so maybe we need to do something different. If I have all this conflict and chaos going on in my city, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me, the mayor, that's the problem. And I do believe you're a huge part of the problem. And I feel bad for you. I mean, my heart bleeds. I, I wish I could reach out and, and help you understand. My friend, you don't have a clue. And you're going down a road, and you've been going down this road for a long time, and, and it's gonna lead to a very bad place for you. And I don't want that for you. Mr. Mayor, you're going down a very bad road. You've been doing it for a very long time. I don't know how much corruption you're involved in, and I know you don't think there is any. I know that you probably sit back there going, well, and, and here's the problem. Here's what your body language says in your meeting. Your body language says, look, I am the mayor of this little podunk town in Florida. So by God, you need to just do what I say to do. There should be no open discussion. There should be no anything. Let's pay the bills. Just pay the bills. Pay the bills. Let's just pay the bills. What bills? I don't know, but let's pay them. So maybe they're your bills. Maybe you need your credit card payment paid and you're getting the city to do it. Who knows? what's going on, but when you don't disclose full disclosure of every bit of information there is, you look corrupt. And I can see that you really think you're right. And that's the problem. You know, not only are you maybe corrupt, yes, but you really believe in your mind, you can see it, that you don't think you're doing anything wrong, that it's okay for you to try to dictate what happens in the town because you're the mayor. And that's not the way it works in the United States. It just is not. So Mr. Mayor, I would ask you to resign. Um, I would ask you to move out of Otter Creek. I would ask you to go find another place to live and leave these people in peace. Uh, especially, you know, so you can enjoy your time on the earth before you maybe wind up in jail when something is discovered that you're not going to enjoy your life. All right, Mary Mary Math is quite so scary. Apparently everything's scary. I feel bad for you. And, and just like your mayor, I understand that, that you're at the pinnacle peak of your life. Being the town clerk in, in this little podunk town and in Florida of 100 people, and I don't mean podunk is in a bad way, but you have nothing there. It's just a simple little town. This is the highest you've ever gonna be in your life. This is the pinnacle of your life. And Mary, here's, here's why I feel bad for you. Because the mayor has set you up, and you don't realize this. This mayor, here, here's a psychological leadership training method that we use. Now, if, if I want to empower a lower employee, and this is what you are, maybe you're the only employee, but here's how it works. And we do this, and you guys can look at this as secretaries, and I don't mean picking on secretaries, I love you all. But here's what we do as management with our secretaries. We tell everybody, hey, she's in charge or he's in charge. Our secretary is the one's really in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be the vice president, but my secretary, that's the BS he's convinced you of. He's convinced you that you are a higher position than you really are. So that when all of this comes out in the muck and the corruption, the back back payments, you know, the corruption, anything that you guys have done illegally, not in compliance with the Florida Sunshine Law, not in compliance with, you know, America with Disabilities Act, not in compliance with anything, 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 you, young lady, are gonna be in a world of trouble because he's given you the ego boost to help protect himself by saying, the town clerk is the one who's in charge no town clerk, there's no town. You know, she's the leader. She, he just did that on the news last night, Mary. He's setting you up to take the huge fall. He openly just said, it's all Mary's fault. Without Mary, without Mary, without Mary, it's Mary. He's setting you up, Mary. 
And I really feel bad. And now, look, I get women like you. You know, I've grown up like old women like you who like to put their hands on people and and who like to do the passive aggressive. And, and, and I get that. And I know in the South, people are kind of touchy-feely and it's the kind of like, oh, you're my long lost friend, even though I hate you type of mentality, which um, is sad, but you know, I get it, Mary, and I get your personality. I really don't know what to tell you, young lady. I, I wish the best for you. I mean, I think everybody in America feels so bad for you, and I mean, well, the world, because you come across so, so bad, and I promise you, you're being manipulated, and you don't even realize it, and if you're not, that's even sadder. You know, if you truly think you're this important in the world, Oh my gosh, Mary. So my advice once again to you is to get ready one to go to jail, but I would quit like you did and I would stay uh, stay out of it. I would mind my P's and Q's and I would just let nature run its course because it's not gonna be good for you because he's been throwing you under the bus and setting you up so that when the uh, when the uh, the police come a knocking, they're gonna become knocking at Mary's door. And, uh, and that's sad, Mary, that's sad. So that's my advice for you, Mary. Please, please take care of yourself. Now, to the town of Otter Creek, and how do we move forward from this? Here's real simple. You gotta start over. Now, I'm not saying you go down there and you burn down your city hall and you wipe out all the records that supposedly are or are not there. Don't do any of that. I'm just talking about from the day one when you get your new mayor, mayor next month, you get her in place, hopefully she's a good person and the, and the team can work together. One, you incorporate Robert's Rules of Order. You put those into place in a firm format. You have meetings. You do everything that's required by Florida Sunshine Law. You don't break any laws. You treat everybody equally. You treat everybody fairly. That's how you start to move forward. Now, there's going to be a lot of corruption uncovered and a lot of lawsuits that your city is going to have to deal with. And I'm just going to tell you, here's, here's what I know from my experience, and I know you don't know me, but I have a very vast background in government. Uh, relations in different ways. If you can show that you're making a good faith effort to correct things and to move forward and do things right from today, then maybe it won't be so bad on your city about all the things you guys did wrong in the past, right? So you might get some lucky forgiveness by going, okay, look, we acknowledge we have violated federal law state law. Okay, now we can't do anything about the people that have stolen money. That's a legal thing. That's a criminal thing. But these other things we can honor and try harder to do better. That's how you move forward. You own the mistakes of your city. There's nothing wrong with that. We all have to own our own mistakes. Jeremy owns his own mistakes. I do too. Everybody else in the world does. That's how you start to move forward. Now, from day one, when you get your new council in place, you get your new mayor, here's one suggestion I would have. Um, I would have your next town meeting, do everything like you normally do. Please use Robert's Rules of Orders, okay? And understand them, understand that. Then I would do an open comment at the end, you know, where you let your citizens, and I would let them go until they're done. I know everybody wants to put a three minute limit on it, I tell you what, why don't you just let people talk and let them express their feelings, their pain, their anger, and their suffering for what's been going on and what is going on. Let them get it off of their chest and get it said. There's nothing wrong with that. Because once you let people run out of energy, then they can start to change their mindset and move forward about how do we make things better. But when you're going to end the meeting while people are wanting to talk, when they're wanting to express public comments, that's not going to work. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you that suggestion, all right? And I, look, I don't live in your town. I love Florida. We all love Florida. We, you know, been there many times. We've come there quite a bit. The other thing I would do is, as a council, is I would apologize to the citizens of Otter Creek and say, look, we, just like I've done to you guys, I feel bad for Otter Creek and I feel bad for all of you guys. And, and I'm sorry that you guys are all having to go through this. I would do this exact same thing with the citizens of Otter Creek. I would simply say, look, from a, 
a management standpoint, as a city council standpoint, we just want to apologize for all the garbage that's happened in the past. We recognize that a lot of people are upset. They have hurt feelings. Maybe they've been wronged financially. And we, going forward today, is going to try to improve and do better. That will go millions and millions of miles to improve public relations in Otter Creek. Not only in Otter Creek, but the news would get off your back and quit making you guys look like a bunch of idiots. Two, the world may actually appreciate, you know, hey, look, these guys are gonna be proactive. They recognize that there's been wrongdoing. I'm not saying you're admitting to wrongdoing. I'm saying that you're recognizing that people think there's been wrongdoing going on. And so we are pledging to go forward. So that's something I would encourage the town council to do. Secondly, or thirdly, wherever I'm at on this list, you need to clean that nasty ass community center, town hall, library, whatever you call it up. You can't have a professional environment look like a trash dump inside. You know, you're, you can't, one, you also can't keep somebody from videotaping in a public area. And you only have one area that's your town hall. You can't say you can't come into the town hall and videotape. You can have restricted areas, but the whole thing can't be restricted. It's a public building. So you got to get rid of those stupid little signs that don't mean anything. You need to invite the public. You need to say everybody is welcome into our community. Everybody's welcome into the water department, the electric department, whatever it is you guys do in that little room. But I'd clean it up because it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that you guys look so incompetent that you can't file paperwork. Two, now look, here's another advice. I know you guys are a small town, you probably don't have a big budget, and you probably don't have a budget at all, unless it's just to pay whatever bills Russell says to pay, which nobody knows what bills those are. I'm gonna advise you to either get QuickBooks, a, a, biz, a, a business operating software, you know, maybe if you if you call QuickBooks and say, look, we're in a city that's in trouble. Could we get a free copy? Maybe they'll give you into it. I think is who makes QuickBooks. Maybe they'll give you a free copy so you guys can keep books. Uh, by the way, you can push out your profit and loss reports every month for the meetings. You have to start being diligent and taking care of the finances. You can't just wing money that's not yours it's not your money and you got to keep a hands-free clean policy when it comes to corruption and money so if everything's documented and open to the public and i really mean that you guys got to embrace the new concept that we will answer questions as fast as we can we will get you whatever documents we have that's been generated because look i get that you guys are never going to find those documents that went missing um, and you're going to have to at some point settle up and with the lawsuits and say, we don't know. We don't have those records. They disappeared. You know, who burned them? We don't know. But they're not there. But going forward, you have to preserve those records. You might want to create a website where you can publish these. You have to treat everybody fairly in the town. If you're going to be giving some people late bills and not late bills and shut off, you need to be very consistent for everybody. And if you got to reboot your system, then reboot your system. If you got to take a step back and go, okay, we're doing this all wrong. I need to go and get advice from another area, from a expert, another city manager who's a much larger city manager. Because look, as, as somebody who taught forever, and did a lot of private consulting work, I was always happy to pick up a phone and talk to somebody for free about the topics that I'm an expert in and say, sure, I'll help you. What advice can I give you? You have these questions here. I am sure you guys got a town manager, a city manager, somewhere in Florida that would be happy to pick up the phone and say, here's my suggestions. Here's how you can change this around very, very quickly and efficiently and effectively and you can do that do you need to hire another town clerk absolutely you know get one hired up get somebody who's competent you know look more than maybe a high school diploma maybe you got to look at somebody you know who has an associate's degree at least some accounting background somebody that can operate a computer efficiently 
You know, even using Excel and Word is not that complicated. So you got to get somebody who can do all of that. And then you need to have oversight, continue oversight. So that's how you guys need to move forward. Now, I think, well, let me touch on uh, your fire hydrant deal. What? Why? I would like to know who actually made the decision to padlock your fire hydrant. That's one of the, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, that just, okay. So, so let's keep, see, I get, I get distracted by your drama. I mean, it's, and, and that's part of what I'm telling you guys. You have a great community. You have really good people that want to help in your community. And you have a very few corrupt bad apples that, and you know why a lot of people want to be in this little minute power? Because look, and this is what I'm telling you about Russell and about Mary Mary. They don't want to serve the community to help the community. That's not why they're there. They have their own agenda. You can see it in the body language. You can see it in the way they speak, the way they smile, which is body language the way they behave, their agenda is not to help Otter Creek. Their agenda is about themselves. They're doing this because it makes them feel like invincible. They are the king of Otter Creek. That's how they feel and that's why they do this. This is why they're in that. When now, obviously, Mary Mary who quit, because of the probably the legal trouble that she's going to be getting into, but also the spotlight is on her and she's no longer the queen of Otter Creek, well, then there's no incentive for her to do that. And that's a sad thing. You want people in power and leadership who, you want people in leadership who doesn't want the power, but they just want to lead for the right reasons. And you lead by example. You lead by doing the right thing and everybody else will follow. So, Doing this for your own ego is not a good example to follow. So please understand that. Because I really think you guys got a nice, quiet, little, simple, simple community there that you could be a part of. Do you need to get your water infrastructure fixed? Yeah, but you need to get somebody who's competent. You need to read your meters every month. You need to do the right thing all the time. Because that's what's leading by example is. Whether you guys like it or not, the citizens, Jeremy, the town hall, the town council, the mayor soon to be, whoever it is, all need to do the right thing all the time. That's how you make Otter Creek better. Uh, all right, my friends. Hey, anyway, man, we, we, we are pulling for Otter Creek. We are. We are pulling for Jeremy and his, his group, or tribe, whatever you want to call them, Jeremy. We are pulling for Otter Creek. We hope you guys do best. You have our support. You have, you know, a lot of support around the world that wants to see you guys do better. And I will keep watching, and I just hope and pray that you guys continue to prove. Because as we've seen, there are so many good people in Otter Creek that it's unbelievable. You guys just got to step up and get rid of the ones that are not so good and take an ownership, take ownership and the future of Otter Creek. All right, my friends, it's been David with Philippine American Couple. Um, you know, this is not a topic I normally cover in our channel, our family channel. Uh, we do a lot of travel, immigration and all kinds of other stuff. But I just wanted to give my two cents and, and give a shout out and support to Otter Creek and Jeremy and his group. Take care, guys.